why can't just teaches you one thing? If the revenue is growing, company is growing. Otherwise, <laughs> no BS. Company is not growing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now that, that principle is very important. What's going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Next Big Thing podcast. Today, we are joined by Pawan Gupta, the co-founder and CEO of India's New Age Matrimony app, Better Half AI. So uh, with that being said, uh, Pawan, welcome on the podcast. We're excited to have you. Thank you, Brendan. and Connor for inviting me. So uh, as we usually do on the next big thing, we're going to hand it over to Pawan, and he's going to tell us a little bit about uh, his exciting uh, company and Better Half AI. Yeah, most exciting thing from India. So, <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, so here is it's been five years building in a better half. Um, you know, my background has been, uh, you know, I'm a repeat founder, uh, engineering from, from India, then computer science, uh, then business school from MIT. Um, I think, you know, fast forward what happened, a deeper personal problem came in, you know, towards matchmaking and matchmaking in India is, you know, you have serious matchmaking that leads to matrimony. Uh, and I was excited about this. And then I found my co-founder again, MIT grad, computer science. Uh, so I think we, we teamed up, but I think over time, you know, we became India's first matrimony app without parents. Today, we are the fourth largest matrimony player in India, taking over, you know, the matrimony industry. That's the plan. Uh, you know, Y Combinator happened in 2021, you know, grew faster pre-Series A, then 18 months into that, Series A you know, was announced. Now we have become one stack product, end to end for urban Indians, you know, to get married. Uh, we are the first and only marriage super app in India. So, you know, people you know, matchmake, and then there is verification, gifting, astrology, venue booking, decoration, photography, bridal makeup, Mandy, you do everything. And I think the timing is right. It's $130 billion in the industry, you know, in India, the brides and grooms are increasingly deciding their entire marriage decisions. We want to enable that. We want to facilitate it. 150 people team, we're doing roughly 250 of monthly revenue. I think it's just growing, growing, growing. Uh, so I think it's on it. Um, the next is clearly, you know, series uh, B for us. So deeply focusing on building the company. I'll tell about um, a larger vision, you know, of, of this. But, you know, if you see Super App, it was, uh, it was coined, you know, I think with China. It's uh, it's very, you know, it's not, a uh, I think, a word that you know, use in the Western world about. Um, but especially in Asia, you know, Asia works very differently. Like China, South Asia, you know, India, you know, those reasons you know, work very differently. Uh, so if you see, uh, I think eight years ago, WeChat became the world's first super app. Uh, five years ago, uh, Gojek became the world's second super app. You know, the ride sharing app and started doing many, many things. In India, three years ago, this trend came where across different industry verticals, you have larger companies that has come in. Uh, I think you've heard of Swiggy, so from food delivery, you know, to grocery, you know, to courier, you know, packages, you know, just getting the medicine. So like they do all, you know, at home. Uh, if you look into health and fitness, going to gym and meditation and sports care, everything happens at, you know, kind of uh, no broker, right? In real estate, uh, you know, just renting home, buying home, you know, furniture, movers and packers, painting, all happens through no broker in fact, home loans. But I think one of the large industries, in fact, uh, uh, this is the fourth largest also industry in India. Uh, India is about three, three and a half billion dollars in our economy. Um, so this industry, uh, nobody you know could build a horizontal stack, you know, for the bride and grooms. And we were the first player in India. Uh, product is maturity. I'd love to show you, you know, uh, how the super app works. But that's something we are focused on. Uh, we marriage was what excites us. This is what we do. Uh, in fact, half of our employees are looking, you know, using our product. Uh, funny note is we did lose one or two employees because they got married from Better Half App. And they left. They said, I'm relocating. I'm like, we never started the company because of it. <laughs> so, you know, those are side effects of building the company. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so we do end-to-end, -end, you know, matrimony to courtship, you know, to wedding. Maybe a couple of years later, you will see post, uh, you know, uh, post-wedding uh, honeymoon and, you know, those uh, couple dining, couple tours, those things, you know, will be coming in, marriage anniversary events. Uh, but this is going to be that one point of product. Uh, tech enabled great best in class service. This, uh, I think, you know, something that we'd like to tell you, you know, from India, um, I want to just show you quickly the product, you know, how this works. Um, look, the journey. So if you see here, right, it's just the journey starts from matchmaking. So, you know, you can match people based on your reason, uh, community, 
language is used, you know, marital status, city. In fact, if you go locally in India, it's also community, community or caste. So, you know, Bengali, like people with Bengali, right? So they will want to like get married to Bengali or Gujaratis will want to like get married to Gujaratis. So these, these are over 300 of, you know, such larger communities and uh, 2,500 of smaller communities. So that's how there's a comfort, you know, that happens. Uh, but that's how we find. So let's just pick you know, one of them. So we go to community and, okay, let's just do Brahmin, right? And let's see. So you'll see, you'll start seeing a very customized page. I'm showing you web, but most, I think, you know, our main product is mobile. Uh, overall, we're doing over 1 million MAU. So I think these are the profiles you see, and then you register. Uh, and you get matched. It's very fast. We are inventors of, uh, I think, single-click matching. So, you know, we hold a US patent on that. So I can just show you. Um, it's the world's fastest matching tech ever built, and th that's a novel innovation. Uh, so you know you can you can get patent in India. That's just slightly easy, but not in the US. It's just a very high bar. Uh, so you know we hold a patent in the US, um, and just based on your name, reason, um, uh, just based on your name, gender, and date of birth, we'll be able to predict your reason, um, community, language, your partner preferences, your height estimation. Um, we do all of these. Uh, we predict the 16 demographic traits, and in one click, you start getting matched. It's very fast. Uh, so, you know, that's there. But let's look into so, this is how, you know, we, you know, the journey, you know, starts on the right path. Now, after that, then comes uh, this is a very interesting product, uh, Managed Biodata. So, it's like resume, uh, but, <laughs> you know, this is a shared biodata. So, let's just type, you know, we, we, we rank number one you know, for this. So, if you just type Managed Biodata, you know, we, we rank number. These are ads. You know, this is something we rank organically. It's a beautiful product. Uh, close to 70,000 to 100,000 uh, of biodata. You know, it's created through our product every month for free. And people share this you know, to their family, friends, on WhatsApp. That's how you know, they get married. So we get a little brand value you know, into this one. You also get you know, premium biodata. But the managed journey is something, matching journey is, you know, I think we've done a good job. You have you know, premium colors you know, that you can use as well. But this is, a, it's, I think, a strong you know, shareable feature. Uh, let's chat about next step. So there is astrology. Um, so I can show you again. So you can get frequently matching between two people. So, uh, you know, if you just fill these uh, things, you'll, you'll get actually proper Kundli report. Um, so two people horoscope matching and then uh, those matching scores are needed. So usually more than 18, uh, you know, out of uh, 36 is required for a favorable marriage. So you, you can do all of these. But let's see, once the journey extends more, uh, that's when you have wedding services, free wedding invitation card. And I think uh, just recently, you know, we have launched a wedding venue, uh, you know, uh, booking. So we have done it with 30,000 venues in India. Uh, uh, locally, we are in Bangalore. So we have strong partnerships with, with over 200 suppliers, venues, decorators, photographers. And now if you just go and look into that, uh, this is an MVP. This is going to become, uh, I think, a larger MVP. But you have, it's going to look like, uh, Airbnb for weddings. So you see beautiful photos, uh, you know, of that, let's see, place. Uh, so photos are critical. Uh, but after that, you get a lot of filters and metadata about this. Uh, so that's something we're building in this month. So, you know, you'll see the review, you'll see per flight, you know, per flight information, booking. Uh, it's a beautiful, I think, entire content about how the venue works. And then the booking information uh, is going to be launched. Uh, so we are going through this phase now. Uh, so next, next phase, you know, for the company, we have wedding decorators across the country listed as well. Uh, so you can see that. Uh, so now uh, I think those things are advancing. I can just wanted to chat, show you wedding photographers. This was launched last week itself. So now cleaning up entire actually this data cleaning up is going on. So I think towards June end, you know, you'll see category by category. Uh, you know, that's there. Uh, wedding just on wedding, you know, we are doing over hundred thousand dollars of worth of wedding bookings every month. I think. Last one year of a lot of testing is actually picked up very well. So if you think on, we do like three things, right? Matchmaking, astrology, wedding. Matchmaking is the most advanced business. Uh, so I think it's heading towards number four to number third there in the country based on revenue and MAU. Astrology, uh, now that's a division. Now the product is actually built. Now actually the marketing is actually picking up. Wedding, uh, last one year of testing, last six months of rigorous actually work. Now we have some kind of blueprint on how match meaning customers route to wedding. Uh, if you think on a sh like kind of like a unique business model disruption, our paid users spend 29 months as of today on the products. So roughly two and a half years of journeys already what better have us created. So you come here, you know, for matchmaking, 
typically these people buy six months plan then renew uh, which is which is normal so it takes up to a year to find a match so 50 60 percent of those users renew but then verification uh, you know paid messaging you know on, on our matchmaking you know happens and then in about a year the journey of wedding actually begins so that's when the it starts with venue booking and then usually larger ticket size like photography dec- decorator than smaller ticket size which is your uh, i think in western world it's called hina um, so you know you do like you know uh, those tattoo but those are you know it's are done from you know organic products right here uh, so you know bridal makeup and the dj's entertainment so you see bachelorette parties all of these things uh, you know happens you know in this one um, mostly we see um, we spend roughly 30 40 dollars uh, on acquiring one you know, transacting use that is now translating to, to three thousand, four thousand dollars over time. So it's, it's it's very interesting on how we have seen that journey now. So on it, completely building it. You know, I think the plan is to become the largest category leader. Uh, you know, in this business uh, and build a very interesting, I think, tech enabled company. You know, uh, on wedding space with expand up to thirty cities, but not very far away. That many years from now, we might be talking about expansion to you know, international markets. Uh, so on it, very deep focus on building. Well, Pawan, I love the product and I'm curious, speaking about the origin of Better Half AI, how did you come up with the idea? Oh, uh, so 2013 to 15, I was at MIT uh, business school and mostly I was skipping uh, a lot of classes. I was traveling to Silicon Valley. Uh, <laughs> my friends were there, like the weather more as well. Uh, so did that. My learning you know, came mix of institution and you know, outside, like both ways that was I think pretty pretty good, uh, um, but then I think one year into the journey, I was working in California in product management role, um, and my visa did not go through. Uh, it's a I think it's a blind system, right? It's, there's not merit on this one. I didn't want. Uh, I think I, I didn't want any. I think just uh, the unfair system and to decide my career path. So I thought I'm going to do something that I like, and then my mentors actually advised me. Uh, wanted to pick a problem because if you stay in Silicon Valley, <laughs> mostly people last for two years, right, in the company. So <laughs> that's what's happening, right, maybe at Facebook uh, that time, right? So he said, why do you want to keep hopping around job? That's most likely the reality. So pick the problems. I said, look, I want to learn building products. Uh, you know, I want to do some things, right? <laughs> I want to give jobs. Um, and that's when he said that, why don't you do that? You focus on a problem, you build a business, and I think you will largely emerge as as you will be able to acquire a lot of skill sets and learnings and on the way. And we were not very actually we were not very aspirational that way when we started. We were like, this is what we like, you know, we and then in that time my search for marriage partner was going on and rejections in a both ways. So sometimes parents would meet me, right, and you know in, in Silicon Valley, sometimes some other places that right? um it happened that uh, uh you know I I, I um, I really like somebody, right? You know, on the matrimonial side, based on a photo, uh, uh, and then uh, I think she's from Georgia Tech, and I was like, okay, this looks fine. But it took me four months, you know, to even uh, get the first call, and I actually didn't succeed. So the parents came in between. So one two months, they said, you don't have a job right now. You get a job first, right? So we're like, okay. So two three months of interviewing process, then we got a job. So hey, I got a job. Can I now talk to your daughter? It's like, no, I have my brother, you know, and uh, so, you know, he, this, this person said, uh, hey, uh, I have my son working in Silicon Valley. You should meet him first. I'm like, Why should I meet this person first? Let me talk to the bride. So, and we really got confused, you know, this was delayed. And after four months, I gave up. Like, I'm like, it's not happening, right? It's, uh, and, but that's what is, I think, reality, you know, going through a parent's driven process because parents to their siblings, they will come in between and you have to pass all of those things before you talk to the person that you would want to spend time with, right? Um, very, I think, a lot of hiccups. Uh, and then, you know, when I moved from MIT to you know, Silicon Valley, I was in San Francisco for about six months. Um, then Rahul, you know, my co-founder, you know, we found a way to live together. So sharing the same actually, uh, room. So just like, uh, and he was working with a different company. So he said, okay, uh, Rahul, what's happening? And then uh, this guy's engagement broke during that time. So we started talking like every time, like after office hours, we'll just go, you know, said, hey, what's happening? And it's like, man, like this is not very, not looking good, like compatibility issues and this, um, seeing his engagement broke. So this how it mattered to us. And then we would start talking to our friends that can we do, want to do something about it. So after a year of work, when the visa didn't go through, it was very smooth. I was, 
I was in a peaceful state that I'm starting my own venture. Uh, this is the problem that I enjoy. Uh, Rahul joined in. Uh, so we said, okay, we can do something. It looks very hard because most businesses in this industry, like matchmaking, you will see, it's, it becomes a marketing company. Uh, it becomes very business-oriented. There's nothing much on product check on data. That's something I think MIT guys are more like nerds, like so they understand it more. Uh, so this was Rahul and I, you know, I think our view. And that we want to focus on the tech part, data part, product part more. Uh, still, now fast forward, better half is that strength today. If you look into AI matchmaking across the world, you'll find better half always is number one. If you find anything related to data in this industry, you'll always like find better half holds that spot. Uh, so that's what we know. We enabled this. So single click matching was invented. And then, uh, uh, interestingly, right? So why commentary was our fourth try, like three times reject. Um, really? You know, yeah, yeah. So there was a free word for first two years. Uh, we were building product for matchmaker, didn't take off. Uh, third year, like product just built, no revenue. So like, not did not take off. Fourth year, we had our <laughs> growing revenue, but we just changed the story. Like you know, every time we'll pitch through matchmaking, they'll just not give an interview call. Uh, so somebody told me you will never get in. So change it to a platform. So you know, you guys will build a platform and series of product in this industry. So we changed it. Uh, market size became bigger. Uh, the product was looking good. Revenue was growing. We got, I think, towards the last date, uh, you know, we got an interview, and then you know, we 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 did that. I think we we did well in the interview, and we got it. And now it's pretty interesting. It's a really good relationship, you know, with our group partners. Um, once in a while, I think you know, group partners are involved. Sometimes Michael Sable is also involved. So I think uh, it's a very interesting. And now we are like, why come just teaches you one thing? If the revenue is growing, company is growing. Otherwise. <laughs> no BS. Company is not growing. <laughs> so, so now that, that principle is very important. It's a strong P and led company today. Strong leadership. Um, Series A was announced at the most economic downturn of the world. We were, we were. I think in my view, we were the only company in India in the month of March that announced Series A. Uh, so the toughest market, and we we're like, if our P and L, if our revenue is strong, if our unit economics are strong, if the market sizes is, is large enough. If we have a technical excellence, if we have a great, let's see, outstanding management, somebody will pick it up. And that's when we became Instagram co-founders, first investment in India, Dropbox co-founder, second or third investment in India. But we have like folks from Uber X CPO, Spotify X product head, uh, Flipkart X CPO, I think uh, Google next billion users, GM, like all those people right now involved in India, number of founders, unicorn operators are involved, Bumble's largest investor is involved. So I think we're in good shape now. I think it's uh, I think our view is not to focus too much on competition, like just focus on customers and employees, keep building product, keep growing revenue. That's why we want to build the company. Well, I do, I do find it fascinating how you started off as just matchmaking and then you wanted to expand the market. So you started getting into the wedding industry. Now, how has that been kind of creating more of a full stack company and how has it been disrupting the wedding industry right now? Oh, uh, So first of all, when I checked with industry players, uh, people thought it, it was a stupid idea. Uh, and here was the reason, uh, logically. So matchmaking, when it happens in India for a matrimony purpose, it takes up to a year, six months of search, then you know somebody, then some months of, you know, just courtship period, and then parents get involved to the audience that we are targeting. It's an urban Indians metro cities. Um, if you target tier two cities, then parents are going to take the first city. But ours is very focused. Top 30 cities of India, pretty cities of India, that's where we're focused on. Uh, working professionally. So increasingly, they are the decision makers, you know, becoming more decision makers you know, on their marriage. Uh, when I think this happened, then if you look logically, post matchmaking, there has to be courtship. And in the Western world, courtship goes for multi, multi years, three years, five years. Right? In India, it's short, it's a few months. And then some astrologer gets involved, which is a family astrologer, checks horoscope, or in India, we call it Kundli, then you pick a date for your wedding. So in Hindu marriages, there are, I think, 71 auspicious dates. And you'll find that these are the dates, they will not get married on other dates. So that's for Hindu marriages. But for Christian, Muslim marriages, it's usually not much concept of auspicious dates. You know, they just get married you know, throughout, the, throughout the, I think, the calendar. Especially for Christian marriages, that's it. For Muslim, there are some you know, auspicious dates. So said, but largely 85% of the population in India, there are Hindu. Uh, now, when the astrologer comes in, when the wedding date comes in, the first thing is engagement. 
So first, like, you know, first few months, six months engagement happen and then another six months, you know, wedding happens. So that's a process that we go through. But if you look into this logical view, these two are large different problems of this industry. First is matchmaking and the second is wedding planning. Because then, and these two also looks like it's a different business. Matchmaking is largely online. You know, you have men, women, you have a great product matching together. Let's see our matching algo is quite advanced. But then you have a branding element that comes about. The, let's see the Bumble story, right? But Tinder is more like a product like the story. But largely that's how it just works. But if you look into wedding planning, in US now you see, right, at joy.com, with joy.com, you know, just there's wedding planning apps that has come in, RSVPs, and you start planning, you know, those things. In India, it has picked up now. But it's largely service, right? Because, okay, finding a vendor, a photographer, a decorator, a venue, meeting them, negotiating with them, proposals, advanced payment, booking, service quality. So it seems disconnected and there is a gap. So nobody really thought of, of integrating uh, these two together. When one of the companies did it, they had a very poor service you know, on the ground. So it didn't take off and different brands. So we were the first ones we said, you know what, this few months does not matter. Let's look at the retention rate you know, for customers. How long are they staying? And when we got the confidence that this, uh, I think the last time that it did, it's a video, right? It was 22 months. We think, hey, it's heading towards two years now. In two years, people will anyways get married. Like the entire wedding is going to happen. So they're staying on the app. Now I have, and more than that, so January 2022 uh, was the first time, exactly one and a half years ago, was our first category was launched. So online matchmaking, then it became human matchmaker, then it became verification service, then it became astrology, and then the wedding. You know, entire stack of products. So once we saw that users were retaining, they were using other products, we get we got more comfort. Initially, it was manual process. Now it's automated, so it's a fully controlled uh, experience on the customer experience is controlled by the cloud. And when we did it, we thought about this thing: what are we good at? So like we've always done matching between people, men to women. Then when we built the stack for talking to astrologers or talking to our human matchmakers, we started matching our customers to these suppliers, which is human matchmaker astrology. Now extend this tag. Then we started matching our customers to venue service provider, decorator, photographer. So we're like, hey, this is what it binds all of these together. And then you have a brand that comes in between that holds the same user base. When we did that and when we started seeing cross-sell rate at crossed upwards of 20%, we knew that this is what we And now a lot of work is going on where today, let's see our 80-90% of revenue, you know, 80% you know, comes from matchmaking, 20% from astrology and rating. Three years from now, it will shift. Matchmaking will contribute to like 20%, rating is going to contribute to 80%. That's the transition that we're enabling to take first and customer service second, which is uh, customer service means on the ground customer service, but tech enable customer experience first through the product, enabling this journey, keeping the brides and grooms at the center focus, branding and marketing it to them, and then leading it through ultimately the operations that if you book anything, somebody's going to deliver that great service and it's going to be known as a best in class professional service that you will get. You don't have to take any hassle, uh, you know, at a competitive pricing. So that's what is a package, you know, that we have built. So something that you touched on uh, was that the needs of your customer change over time. And um you talked also about how your competitive advantage centers a lot around your AI capabilities and machine learning of your system. Can you talk about how you created that system and what makes it better than the other systems out there? Okay. So first of all, in the stack of categories, um, AI has a large role to play in matchmaking. Um, uh, today, we have done, I think, close to eight to 10 million of connections or matches on the product. So we have a lot of data about how people are getting matched. And those data, those attributes are usually, right? Your reason, community, language, uh, annual income, uh, 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 then your partner, oh, okay, age, uh, preferences for, for your language. So there's like close to 16 uh, similar and similar attributes for your partner. Uh, then we have compatibility matching as well. So we ask you questions about marriage, which is behavioral questions. Uh, some of the lifestyle habits is also there, right? Smoking, drinking, you know, those habits uh, based on somebody's own preference. Uh, now, when we match people, so you have to look into AI as a journey. So while getting the users, when people are exposed to single click matching, in a click, 
when they get in compared to a 15 minute long onboarding you know of matrimonial players our onboarding rate is 2x better so we can acquire 2x users and largely if you see this business is about matching so if we have more inventory i could be more uh, i can give you more choices based on what you're looking and our matching help optimizes that uh, volume quantity of matches and then quality of matches on a daily basis to retain your company so this is what we package in terms of onboarding but then every day we recommend we curate 2 million recommendations every month we curate 50 to 60 million recommendations that balances the retention that i want you to come back you know every day every 2 3 days two times a week i want to come back start using the product you know and then get matched so that's when ai this matching algorithm plays a big role so this is on attributes the facts then there's a behavioral thing so i've not filed a patent for it we have certain take on this one but on the behavioral matching obviously this was done by mikal kosinski was a stanford uh i think you know he is uh, he was at cambridge as well uh, so he has done a lot of work in terms of human psychology and behavior so we brought some of the things um which i think what okay we did it in the us we did a local version now here uh, on what you know works here so that also helps so these are some things that we have done so far later on the stack would be even increased you know further in terms of more retention more engagement uh then there's a pricing stack you know where we have actually done it so over time based on your uses of the product the pricing actually changes uh you know for different cohorts so it's not the same pricing for everybody and because also there is a willingness of you know willingness to pay seriousness to pay so there's a dynamic pricing thing so you have little touch of ai into that part so matchmaking covers a lot on this one on astrology today there is no ai uh, i don't think ai is needed on this one because it's just a simple matching between you and astrology and it's just we have close to 100 astrologers so you can just go and filter and just type so there's not much element to do on reading uh i think uh, ai will come in uh, not on the ground but in terms of routing you to the choices that you are making, which is something is under development at this point so i think somewhere in this year is going to be launched so if you like a photo you will see similar photos if you like something on decoration you like an element of a decoration uh let's see there is a stage and there is curtain there are flowers and you know there is something right uh, maybe you have actually uh, put in of the decorations items and you like this thing on the wedding you will see related things and that's something our system is going to sense that based on the uses and then we will want to make sure that you we curate that for you and that's very personalized for you so that's when ai is going to come in uh, as of now we have not launched this on wedding i think somewhere in this year let it get launched first and then up launch so i also wanted to go uh, back to something you touched on which was uh, you were talking about your series a and uh how it, the instagram founder it was his first investment in india uh i've been so intrigued by the startup market in india because obviously being a us citizen i don't hear about it a lot but i hear about all the great innovation and better half being one of them uh can you talk about the startup market in india and and what it's like and maybe compare it to the silicon valley time you had in the united states Okay, look. Uh, I, uh, while building the company, I just want to be more realistic, so I can tell you. So, uh, United States, right? So, it's mostly like uh, okay. So, if you look into the research, right, it's seventy-four percent of product managers fail uh, because they're they just they're never able to monetize a product. Okay, so I think the typical theory in Silicon Valley, right? This product looks interesting. It's cool. It's look at it's it's a toy. Let's build it. Okay, and then you know we'll figure out. You know, so this I think that story is gone. Uh, I I don't think that's working out anymore. Especially, uh, I think it's more about hey, what is this customer? How strong is that utility? Uh, you know, for that customer. Okay, can can this be monetized? And do we have some? Uh, you know, I think uh, let's see some kind of actually traction or. uh early view into this if if it's not there you know my i think in my view of build, building the company especially a consumer company is if you don't make money today you won't make money later on so that philosophy is something i stick to it uh also like why common to pushes for same thing monetize monetize otherwise you know especially in developing nations or something right it's 
yes you know we are growing you know we have fifth largest economy right in terms of this but i'm like you got to monetize man if you don't have revenue is revenue right it's it's not so i'm not a great fan of narratives this was a story 10 years back today i don't think i think silicon valley is also changing you know or in on this one now in india right when it come in monetization even becomes more important you know when we build something so there is always deep research on the consumers asking okay is this needed or not and then we check two things is this main course or is that vitamin so in silicon valley i think the language is built both main course and vitamin in india we don't build vitamin so so <laughs> so we we tell it if there is an engagement or retention we say does not matter at this point what matters did you convert or not because if you do it the person is coming again whether the product was good or the utility was good the experience was good so engagement and retention actually is a function of great monetization theory uh, opposite to what silicon valley would think oh let's engage let's let's retain and then monetize i don't think great companies want to build in asia unless we do that uh, so and also you see the behavioral change uh, because of the lower purchasing parity you know here right in india versus united states like maybe united states like 56000 dollars a person here it's 2 or 2000 3000 dollars a person in the urban market where we operate it's 8000 dollars 10000 dollars a person it's still great it's not bad so when we do it i think it's a deep research that happens on willingness to pay deep research on whether it's a main utility for the customer is the customer hungry to pay or not if it's not we do not build it anything nice to have with do not touch it then tight integration very strong integration with the product early points on the monetization when we have it backing it with a manual team initially that okay give them a great customer service and then automate it it has to be done on product so that's how you build things over here um look nobody uses email over here that's even doesn't work it's you know the it's whatsapp you know that works over here and then in many of the products it's for a large ticket size is calling and for an extreme ticket size like our side and our side it's consultation we will enable it more and more through product uh but i think the we will always be utility driven first monetization first and that's how ground up you know we want to build the company well paul on the last question we like to ask is hypothetically you wake up one morning and you see on all the major news outlets better half ai wins in your head paint us a picture what does that mean to you what's the vision what's the future what has better half ai accomplished at that point uh first of all when i see it in the earth i i think it will be a fake news uh because my ambitions are are quite big uh so <laughs> i wouldn't believe that so i wouldn't really fuss around too much about this i think what i want to do <laughs> we are at possibly 0.1% of where we are i was ta- talking to my team you know i think uh, last week itself if you ask me 10 years from now my answer won't largely differ i'll still state we are at 1% of what we're doing because our ambitions to build great product great services great professional service a great tech led innovation that will not change that's something for we are so you will see i think we are writing the playbook of how wedding should be done that's from india we don't have wants to be pioneer of that first i think want to do it in india but i'm telling it it's for the world here is something in europe in america nobody after so it's been aggregate business so you know you just go there and you do all things by your own nobody has automated it nobody has attempted it india became the first country where operations started becoming a product 10 minute grocery delivery was invented in india now you know, you'll see this going to happen in the us or western world so it's very fast you'll see large ops led disruption that happens there large customer service led disruption happens there because of you know we have just so many people it's easier to test it out and now the product talent is also actually venture capital is actually huge product talent has actually grown 10 years back it used to be project management today in the last 5 years it's a real product management at par to the western world our design standards are some of the products are even better if you look into if you just go to quilt.fit it's a health and fitness product you like what in india it's happening bar has been raised very high very very high you know over here um and that's good you know in, in terms of the global you know quality and something and then the product right? it's, it's better for us the entire service automation of weddings where customers don't take hassle of booking these large tickets entire planning of of it where it's done over six seven interactions 
that project management is done well, a great hospitality, great design, and affordable pricing. Once we do it, affordable pricing is ultimately the EMI payments and financial. Uh, I think the packaging is what have happened that you can split your payments over time. Affordable. When we do that, affordable, fast turnaround, great professional service led by tech. That's when we would have done a great job. And I'm telling it, it's going to be copied. Three years, five years, when we do it, they will say, why is this finally it's happening? And once we do it, largely we would want to be the one who would want to expand internationally, uh, mostly you know, to the countries where marriages and weddings happen in a shorter time of, of, of time. So it's, it won't be, you know, we'll, we'll go through a super app, let's say in, in the US market, that won't be a great fit. But for Asia, if you look at Dubai, uh, Singapore, Southeast Asia, Dubai, UAE, I think those reasons, uh, you know, you'll see there's a fit on, okay, people actually, if you start with a goal of marriage and settling down over the next one year to 18 months, we have a product here. If the goal or if the culture is a long-term dating, we don't think, you know, better how we'll have to really look for those things that would really cut off our matchmaking product and directly launch wedding. So those are long-term, I think, different perspectives. But for us, we'd like to be focused on this part of the world and, and offer great you know, products you know, to the customers. And we want to offer that inspiration that please copy us, you know, because we want great products to also reach you know, your country. <laughs> well, Fawan, um, we, I say this, it seems like a lot recently because we've had such great guests, but it is so refreshing for me and Connor to interview someone who is mission-driven and is so passionate about their product. So uh, by saying that, what I'm trying to say is we're going to root for you really hard. We cannot wait uh, to follow your success. Um, you're an inspirational founder. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to see all of the dreams that you might think be uh, fake news come true. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and, 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 I'll, and I'll make sure to reach out to you when, when they do happen and, and remember this interview. So, yeah. Um, Series be around next. <laughs> um, so, with that being said, thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your day to talk to us, and uh, we will uh, will uh, be uh, we'll be keeping up with uh, how the company does. Uh, thank thank you. you so much. Thank you for inviting. Uh, the good interview. I did have my moment of laughter in this one. So, uh, okay, I'm going to go ahead and now focus on building the company. So, thank. All you. right, go ahead, okay. and we'll see you thank next you so time. Much. We'll see you next time on the next big thing. So long. Okay. I'm going to build that now. <laughs>